Orlando for about a week and a half. I wasn't here either. We went down to South Carolina. It's first time ever in South Carolina, and I stayed overnight. We stayed overnight. And then we went down to Florida for a week. Came back up here. I did a lot. Between 2000, I said between 2002 into 2004. About midway through 2002 to the end of 2003, I was trying to be a rapper. And I do say trying, but I didn't try hard enough. <laughs> Went to the studio a lot. Talked to people a lot. Wrote a lot of music. Uh, went and saw some people. And then I was just like, okay, it's time to put in an overdrive. I'm like, I have no focus. I'm so spent in so many areas. What do I do? And I was like, well, yeah, I know one thing. You ain't 16 no more, you ass kind of take care of yourself. And then I end up, you know, 2004, like October 2004, where are you? It's like so funny, I'm in Bridgeport. No, you not. Like, I fucking am. I'm literally right up the street. And I've been up the street for me for like the past six weeks. Every goddamn day from Monday to Friday for, what, for six weeks? I was taking a train from Stanford to Bridgeport. And then I jumped on, what bus was that? Probably the number 10 bus. That's the bus, yep, that's the bus I used to go to Stratford. The number 10 goes right to Wooden Road, and you would jump on that, or you would wait till it came back around and come back down to Bridgeport. If you were going downtown or the side effects or whatever. Literally catch the number 10 bus. And then I would take it. Well, any bus that went over to that side of the east end, over there by the entrance to get on at Lordship Boulevard, the I-95, right by the gas station. I would take the bus. It would go right there, right at the top of whatever street that is. That would go, like, how many blocks is that from Central Avenue? Like, four, five? You would just walk straight up to the gas station where the, where the entry, the exit 30th, and then I would walk, get off the bus, I walk through the gas station, park a lot, and what's that Woodmont Avenue, I want to say. Walk, like, not even, like, 20 feet into the laid law bus yard. I was there for, like, three weeks of classes and three weeks of bus training. One time, I, th- I, was, I remember getting on the bus. The bus hadn't come yet. And I was sitting there, I was just staring down the street. I was like, I want to go. I was like, I want to walk down there, and I'll just take, I guess it's the 13 bus that comes down there. I want to go, I want to see if they're still there. I want to see what's going on. And there's something in me said, mind your business, get on the bus and go home. And that's exactly what I did. I walked down there, you would have ran into, I don't know, I, I didn't know Erica and I was living. Oh, yeah, that's right. They was living in a house over there, right across from the entrance of New York Court. I probably would have ended up over there, if anywhere. I would have probably ended up walking down the street, and they would have been outside, and I would probably would have been at Miss Trina house for a couple of hours before I went home. That's probably exactly what would have happened. Probably would have went to Oasis, got a sandwich, and jumped on a bus and went home. That place has been there since, what, the 90s? We used to go there on my mom, uh, Saturdays and Sundays. My mom used to work at the bar at uh, Side Effects. We used to go there before she went to work and get sausage, egg, and cheese there with me. And a soft roll, grab an OJ, and then fucking go to Side Effects. Eat the sandwich, and then I think sometimes the kid would get on a bus and go to grandma house to be with Will. If that didn't happen, we would end up going to my Candy's house and then Candy wasn't home. We would take a bus, go to grandma house. And then my mom would come and get us after she got off of work. Sometimes that happened. Sometimes we would just stay there. But the kid never stayed for too long. I never remember him staying longer than he had to be. Like, I'm about to go, go chill with Will. Jump on the bus and get a dollar fifty. 
take the bus downtown, transfer, and we just be out. Like, oh, I'm at my grandma's house. He called the bar, be like, I'm at grandma's house, and that would be it. <sighs> and I would stay there. I don't know who I thought I was waiting for, but I never left. I'd get it. End up with the patrons coming in the bar. She was doing here. Here's some money. Just pour money in my hand. Go get you some ice cream. Go play Pac Man. I'm like, why am I the only one still here? I should have somewhere to go. So happy when I got my job at Wendy's. So fucking happy. I was like, Mom, I gotta be to work at 2 o'clock. Why can't I stay at the house? Because they be drive bys at the south of the shop. No, that hour don't. Don't nobody be shooting up traffic like that. Like, I gotta be to work. Unless you're giving me the car, there's no reason for me to come. Yes, it is. Like, even if you gotta stay here for an hour, and you walk down the street to what's the name? Right, the bus stop is right there. Cash number 10. Go to the house, change the clothes. Well, where the clothes you have on, I don't care. Change the clothes, go to work. I'll see you when I get off work. Alright, get to Stratford, change the clothes, go to work, get off of work at 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, right before the store closes, you're only 16, 17. Still so long. That wasn't going to happen. Everybody and their mom was taking the Frosties at the end of the day. You never got the Frosties, that never happened. Sometimes chili, sometimes potatoes, but the Frosties was always gone. The nuggets were gone to me. had to clean the salad bar. I hated cleaning the goddamn salad bar. Yeah, homework to do. I got PM Dawn to listen to. I'm not trying to clean the salad bar. First week, of, what about your first? The first week in college was painful. I still got pictures from the day before we left to go to school. Ran into Steve's eyes. I was like, oh shit. Was like, oh my motherfucking god. The guy. My motherfucking guy. I got to school. Was that? August, the last week of August of 97. I got pictures from that. Will and the kid helped me bring myself in the school. I was so homesick that first night I cried. I cried myself in out of sleep. I was so homesick. And then I think this the third day, they pulled the freshmen together and said, you guys are going away for the weekend. With, I think it was for two, three days, two nights. And I said, you're going to the wilderness in Pennsylvania. And uh, you're going to learn how to live without electricity so you can appreciate what you have more. And this is like an all-girls school. It's a, mostly a minority all-girls school in New Rochelle. All these girls is from the city. They from the Brooklyn, the Bronx, Queens, or they from like Jersey, Connecticut. I'm just like, uh, okay. Didn't have to pay anything, but they loaded us on this, on two school buses. And we went there and the second bus got into an accident. So I think a motorcycle had slid under one of the buses. So they ended up they didn't even get to the place till like an hour and a half after we did. I remember that place. I remember the food being watered down because it was trying to spread in amongst people. The orange juice just tastes like water, like yellow water. The food didn't really have any taste to it. It was just enough to keep you full. I remember that first night they had a bonfire in this field. Like the the place was just about. They had this open field in front of the food the food house. It was about the size of like two or three football fields. But you could tell it was all woods, but they had like uprooted a bunch of trees about the size of three football fields. It was just an open area. And then it was, the rest of it around it was just woods. And it was mad wild animals around there. And they was out there telling we had this big ass bonfire. The fire was probably almost the size of this room, maybe the size of my bed was the woods and then the flames and then we were all around it and they were telling stories. But then I remember when it was over. 
and the, the girls I did end up befriending. I ended up being friends with them for years. And I remember we was like leaving a bonfire. Everybody was kind of jittery because they were putting the fire out. We were all in dark. The only light from where we was was like two football fields away coming from the food house. And then I remember somebody say, like, you know, they want to scream and say bear or something so everybody would get all hysteric. And that's exactly what happened. I remember walking really fast, but I was giggling with my friends, like, oh my God, we got to get back to our room. It was the only light around was a light from the stars and the moon coming down. I remember somebody screamed bear. They just screamed it. And I remember breaking out into a full-blown sprint running as hard as I could toward the food house so I could follow the path to those little bunkers we were sleeping in. I mean, I was in a full-blown sprint at top speed. I mean, I was still pretty athletic then. I had only been out of, been out of Benel for like two or three months. Still had that track, that volleyball, basketball track body that I wish I could have maintained. Oh, <sighs> I remember sleeping in that place. I remember the gnat infestation in the shower. The shower was just like the shower stall was right by a window that that like you couldn't close, and it was just a nest of gnats that swung right above the shower head. I remember, uh, I don't know what that was. I remember the obstacle course we had to do that day. I think it's the second day. They had like a cargo net and they had a canoe. There was like this lake. The property sat on a lake. But it, you could tell it was like a valley with trees. Then the place got flooded. So you could see trees under the water. Like trees were coming out from the base out of the water. And it was all over the place. And it was like, like I got in a canoe and with my roommate then and we had freaking canoed around and somebody said they saw a snake and then we went sh- <laughs> somebody's always doing something stupid I remember zip line that's the first time I ever zip line they had a zip line up there we had to climb up this tree or whatever it had like a ladder on it climb all the way up they tied me to this thing the zip line was about maybe 100, 100 yards, 200 yards. It wasn't that long. But I remember flipping upside down when my feet was in the air. And then I zip line upside down all the way across. I was like screaming. You could hear me echoing through the woods. This shit was funny as that. I remember uh, I had this off spray. My mom had brought me this off spray. And it, it said it kills chiggers. I had that Osprey can for years. Literally, I had it as a souvenir before I finally threw it away like 10 years ago. Like 10 or 15 years ago, I finally got rid of it. It was a green Osprey can. It said it kills like mosquitoes, ticks, and then it said chiggers. I didn't know what a chigger was. And that was like, we used to say the word chigger for everything. It's like, oh, that's my chigger. That's my chigger. I'm like, what the fuck is a chigger? I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. I had that off skin tied to my waist like a holster. I actually just pull out and spray everything. A good time. When you get back to school, school starts. And then your new adventures start. All of a sudden you have adventures. Very ethereal, high as hell adventures. Like the the nostalgia is too fucking intense to handle way too bad to even turn. Well, you think you are at 17 and 18. And at 18, it's probably normal for you to be like that. Because 18 year olds just have boundless energy. Like the first time you hang out, you meet a a, some, uh, a friend from the same state as you, and all of a sudden you, you, you click that way. And then you go with her to hang out with her boyfriend. And then you meet somebody you didn't think you would meet. And then, or you with your girlfriends on a Saturday night. It's like, let's go to Latin night at Club Hollywood. And then you just end, end up dancing with somebody you never thought you'd dance with. And then some nights, it'd be like, it's still kind of warm outside. But it'd be mad quiet in the Rochelle. It'd be mad starry. You just get with your friends. 
you get a black and mild in the 40, you just hang outside and chill to like the wee hours of the morning.